I guess I'd just like to start by um, thanking Jamie and Callie and our senior staff for everything they've done. Um, for our team, sending the plane to come and get us to bring us back from Ann Arbor and um, really letting us be together, which is where we needed to be. Um, also, Coach Tank and our men's team, um, they've done so much already to support um, our team and I know that they're probably gonna need a lot more in the time to come. Um, all the other coaches, I mean, so many people have, have reached out to our program and, and it really, it means so much to us. Um, you know, they'll add so much pride in competing for Iowa State. Um, Iowa State was a really, really, really special place to her. It meant so much to her every time that she went out on the course for us. It, it, it meant the world to her. Winning the Big 12 championship for our team meant so much to her because of doing it for Iowa State. And another highlight was that Sergio retweeted when she won Big 12s. So that was like, also she loves Spain and she loves Sergio. She basically started crying on hole 13 of the Masters when she knew he was gonna win. She, was, she already started crying because um, she was so thrilled. Um, and so just some of those memories of her, you know, our team has been sharing a lot of great memories still with such a competitive person. Um, you know, her, I think it's a Spanish influence in her, but she like wanted to win you no matter what, you know, like I'm gonna win you. The other players would hit it 40 yards by her, but every time she thought she was gonna outdrive them, you know, and um, just to pair that competitive spirit and, you know, you, if she put her mind to something, you could never, she was always going to accomplish it. And um, to pair that with like her soft side, I mean, you know, the spotlight is on her because of her golf, but what makes us so hard and so special is who she is as a person and how much she meant to me personally and to our program and to all of her teammates and to everyone really at Iowa State um, is what makes it so hard for us. You know, she brought flowers for every single one of her teammates on Valentine's Day if they didn't have a Valentine. She would write quotes up on our board, you know, at our facility every day for, for, her, play, for her teammates. Um, her win game was phenomenal. Um, she, when, when she would start around when it was windy, she was so excited. She would always say like, oh, everyone else has already quit, guys. Like, this is our day, Cyclonita's day. Um, she called us the Cyclonita's. And um, her last text to me um, that morning was, you know, we were winning um, in Ann Arbor. And she sent me a live scoring, like, screenshot and was like, love seeing my Cyclonitos on top. Keep it up, girls. Um, and that really typified who she was. Um, yep. How did the conversation with the parents go? Um, it was really, really hard. Um, I recruited her in Spain and, you know, everyone had told her that uh, if you want to play college golf, you have to go to the South. You have to go to the South. And um, when I met with her and her mom, um, when I watched her to tournament in France, um, her mom and I just hit it off right away. Um, you know, we, we just got along great. And her mom said, you know, like, I trust you. I want my daughter to go to Iowa State. And that was a lot of trust that she put in me, and I don't take that trust lightly. Our parents, the parents put in me to come to Iowa State, you know? It's a lot of trust that they put into our program, in our university, and into me. And um, it's, it was very hard, but um, I guess the thing that meant the most to me was that she said, Phil was happy every day that she was there. And even though all this has happened, if we had this to decide all over again, we would still send her to Iowa State. And that was really mental. How important was it to be in here with the, the men's team last night and be able to kind of have that group setting? It really meant a lot to our players, um, just to be able to share stories, to hear, um, you know, from one another and um, think about some of the positive things, I think, you know, some of our men's players are probably in a better place to be able to share at that point. And um, it's, it's great for them to be able to lean on each other. And it's, it's meant a lot to them. And it was, it was really nice. Like, I'm so happy 
our team was able just to get back and be together and have that support. And I just, I can't thank our administration enough for being able to make that happen. Did you tell the team prior to the flight back or was it after you landed or how did that conversation go? Yep, we told them um, just before we left, like just just basically when we found out. Um, I can only imagine, I mean, just stunned. I don't know, I feel so sick hearing about it, but I mean. It, and it's just I, like I hard to set them. in. I mean, you just, you can't even believe it. Um, you know, they just, there started being some reports, um, you know, Ames Police reports um, at Coldwater, and it's kind of like you don't really know what's going on, but then we couldn't get a hold of Phil, and it was just, yeah, there were a lot of questions. Christine, this, this team has experienced loss in the most unimaginable way. Um, what were some of the reactions of the teammates? First, what was your initial reaction? What were the emotions of the teammates? I think it's just disbelief, mostly, you know, like it can't be. Um, Phil is like such a strong fighter and she always has been. So I think it's just everyone thought that, you know, like it can't be, it must be wrong, it must be a mistake. Um, I would just say that was probably the pervasive mood. Um, and then, you know, I think they're trying to be strong for each other and, you know, there's just moments of highs, lows, you know, sharing stories, laughing. Um, like Phil loves cooking and, um, they like had a video out of her when she was she was making the Spanish tortilla, which like you start out by putting oil in the pan, and so she was like trying. It's like, oh, take a video of me, guys, and like flipping it up, and then as it came down, like the oil went and like a fire started on the stove, and she just like calmly steps back, like it was all part of her plan, you know. So they just had videos out, and um, so I would say it's just you know highs and lows, which I'm sure it will be for for some time to come. See the football team wants everyone to wear yellow on Saturday. Just how close is the student athlete body here at Iowa State? I mean, it means so much. Like yellow is our favorite color, um, and yeah, it, it's it's amazing just how everyone has reached out. And I think it also shows a lot how many people's lives that she touched. You know, I mean, between engineering people, the Spanish student body, um, like her hometown. They had a moment of silence for her today. You know, there's just um, I think she touched so many lives and that's what makes it so special and that's, um, you know, that's why I wanted to talk, like, it's not really my style, but it's just, like, I wanted to say, like, how much she's meant to our program and to our university. Did she know how much it meant to have her poster, picture poster, hanging down there? And I know it was hanging down there long before the, whatever you want to call it, um, yesterday hanging across from George, hanging across from Kyvin, did she know what that meant? I think she really did. I mean, she just appreciated it so much. You know, she was on the Farm Strong team and she couldn't have been more delighted and thrilled, you know, and when we told her she was gonna be honored for being female athlete of the year, I mean, she like started crying. Then she just texted me last week, like, there are gonna be so many tears at this game. Like, I cannot believe this. This is such an honor. I can't believe I'm gonna be on the field. Like, well, the whole golf team be on the field on Saturday. Um, I'm not sure. Was there close, a, oh, sorry. How close, obviously, her dream was to, become, to join the Pro Tour and be a pro golfer. How close was she to achieving that? Yeah, she had just, you know, finished first stage of Q School. She was really, you know, at the pinnacle of her career. She won the European Amateur this summer, um, had just played great, and I think was really, um, thought she had a great chance to make it through, through second stage. Um, which was just coming up, you know, why she was preparing so hard for that. I'll was take there, one more question for Christy. Was there a moment on the course throughout her career that kind of typified that personality, that kind of fiery, you know, wanting to beat other people type of style that she had? I think like I was walking with her, um, her final round at Big 12s and she was leading, but she didn't know it. And I wa walk up and she's like in the trees, which the chick hit that like, you know, when she was a kid, she didn't hit it farther than anyone else. She hits it so much shorter. So there was like a forced carry and so she would always tell us about, like it was like a 200 yard force carry, which she couldn't carry it. So there was like a two meter bridge across the center. So her plan was like to bounce it on the bridge and get it over. And like, that was her game plan. And that is what she did, which really kind of shows like how good she is. Um, and so she's in the trees, which I'm like, walk up to her like, wow, this is not our normal place though, you know? And She's like, yeah, there's this hole here. I'm like, really? I'm not actually seeing that hole. Um, 
but she's like, yeah, yeah I, I got this, I got this. And I'm like thinking, actually, you can just make bogey and still win, you know, but she saw the shot and, you know, hit like this high shot over like right on the green to like six feet. And it was just like really typified her, her belief in herself. And she had that same belief in her teammates.